Welcome to email to a completely different kind of video. I do feel like I say that every video, so, but this is actually very different because I'm answering a question that a few of you have asked, and that is how far do I actually hit my golf clubs? Do you want the honest answer? As of right now, I have no idea. Which is a bit of a problem because I've got this awesome new Bushnell V5 rangefinder, which is telling me the distance, but the problem is Al doesn't know how far he hits his golf clubs. Big problem. So I thought I'm going to do a gap test with my irons anyway. I may as well hit record and show you guys exactly how far they go. I mean, why not? So most of you will know what irons I'm playing, but for those of you that don't, I'm currently playing Mizuno MP20s 4 to pitch, 4 iron to 7 iron are the MMCs, and 8 iron to pitch and wedge are obviously the MP20 blades. Look at all those smudges and finger marks. No! So the shafts in these are the Dynamic Gold Tour Issue X100s, half an inch hard stepped. Yeah. And I even got the Smurf grip to match, the Lamkin 3 Gen with three papers underneath. So another reason I'm doing this is because I think you guys probably assume I hate it further than what I actually do when I'm out on the course. So obviously these irons aren't designed to go miles, it's all about feel, um, the experience with the irons and having a bit of control. So compared to irons that I test in here, which can be you know, much larger in size, and I do tend to accelerate a little bit more, um, they tend to go further. So you might be surprised right now and the point is that gap testing is vitally important. So like I said, like I've always said, you have these fantastic devices, literally a virtual caddy in your pocket, but what's the point if you don't know how far this white thing goes when you hit it? It's literally pointless. So I'm gonna hit a few shots with each eye and we're gonna start at the bottom of the bag with a pitching wedge and work his way up. And I'm gonna include the beastie two iron at the end for a bit of fun because that's included as well. So a couple of shots, I'm gonna play some music Chill out, enjoy. Yeah. I do honestly think my dispersion is better with longer irons than it is shorter. Excuse my sweatiness, it, I'm fat. 
fact. It's 38 degrees outside and this is basically a tin shed. So, aircon's pumping. Doesn't feel like it's doing much to be honest with you. I don't hit it heavy. Hmm, not great either. But, last club, two iron, that's bent to 13 degrees, so if you've seen the video or not, I've done a specific video on this because this is my secret weapon. When it works, it is monstrously long. <laughs> when it doesn't, they are probably some of the worst shots you'll see. I mean, heavy, won't go very far. It's not the easiest club to hit in the world. Sorry, I'm gonna correct myself there. Off the tee, it's a lot easier. Off the deck, it's either incredible or it's uh, horrific. <laughs> So five of these, and then we'll look at the numbers and see what the damage is throughout the bag. Bottom. So the key thing here as well is you've got to kind of look at your bag and decide what job each thing has. So for this, I probably wouldn't look at carry. Everything else I would. So I'd look at 40, 40 pitching wedges carry because you want to be hitting into greens. This, very rarely I'm hitting into greens. Maybe a long par five, hitting this in, but still carry is not really on my mind. I'm just trying to hit the green. So total distance I'd probably look at with this. But when you've topped it off the tee, this is like, okay, get me back, into it, get, get me back to where I should be. If you comment below, I'm keen to do a dedicated course video on this because it deserves, it deserves it. <laughs> By the way, it's still a steel shaft. It's still Tor Issue Dynamic Gold X100 hard step. So it's a monster. So that's all the shots done. I'm going to hit one more. I will delete this shot, but I want to show you if I give it a little bit more, what it's capable of. It's capable of going in the canyon. I'll do it again. <laughs> so that's, I mean, take that. 280 total, you see, so that's deck. I think in the video I did get it up to 300. Turned it over. Can happen with this to 288. So yeah, it's there, we can do it. And this is exactly where you can diagnose your distances. Are, are you longer in one and not the other? This is something you probably need to look at. So if you've got a particular yardage, what club are you gonna hit? You wanna try and avoid the Oh, this is a nine and a half iron. This is an eight and a half iron. If you can, you want to obviously pinpoint a full 100% shot. They're much easier to control, especially with me at the wheel. If you're going to do a gap test, first of all, I'd say you probably need to do more than five shots. This is just a quick, otherwise it's going to be like a, an hour long video <laughs> by the time I've finished. So it's just a quick way of showing you. Obviously, we had, I, I did keep some bad ones in there, which I probably wouldn't necessarily doing a gap test. We want to know how far we hit this well, ideally. You don't want to be judging a club on, oh, if I hit this badly, it's going to be perfect. No one does that. So we'll start off. So carry with pitching wedge, 153, nine iron, 170, eight iron, 183. Seven iron, 199, six iron, 215, five iron, 227. And four iron, 233, and two hybrid, 249 on average yards. So I'm pretty happy with those gappings. The only thing that alarms me a little bit is the four iron to the five iron. Four iron we're carrying 233 with five irons 227. 
So compared to the other irons in the bag, the pitching wedge in the 9-iron was a larger gap than that. But as we saw in the test, and this wouldn't happen in a gap test, I hit the 4-iron. Four out of the five shots were pretty poor, to be fair. So that gap would, obviously, expand. So people ask, what is the ideal distance between each club? And that does depend on the individual. You've got to look at your range of distances between the entire set of clubs. So for me, pitching wedge 150, two iron 250, 100 yards, I'd ideally like to spread across the entire bag. The wedges should take care of the stuff below the 150 pitching wedge and the three wooden driver, hopefully. The gaps will be larger, but they can take care of everything that's past that. But now I've got these distances, I can then cross-reference this. I'll print this sheet off, laminate it, stick it on my bag, and then as soon as I'm out on the course, I can zap it with my Bushnell V5. It'll tell me I've got 230 yards. I'll be like, look, if I get this right on average, this is going to be a, probably a four iron. Probably not the best example because I hit those pants. But you get what I mean. Thanks, guys. Something completely different. A um, bit of a view of my golf game, or lack of golf game, should we say. Not the most organised person in the world. Definitely, in this sense, I'm terrible with, with regards to yardages. I'm more likely to tell you off <laughs> than tell myself off, which is shocking, really. So, guys, if you're not already a member of Team Al, hit that subscribe button. Comment below if you enjoyed this and if there's anything else you'd like to see of my game. Let me know, and I would love to put the video together. Follow me on social media. The links are below.